Hey guys, so it's March 22nd, 2020. The streets are completely empty. The world is probably about to end due to coronavirus, but I left my quarantine to go out and test this. I uh, hope you can see that the light isn't perfect. Um, to test this little 3D printed sort of rocket quad hybrid thing that uh, sparked quite a lot of interest when I posted it on Instagram. And I'm really quite curious to see how this thing will perform. I mean, ah, the light is shit. Uh, I think this is the best spot here. Sorry, it's, it's windy outside, so I have to do this video in my car. So the audio doesn't completely suck. So what this is, is basically just a three inch quad with a pusher prop configuration in a sort of 3D printed aerodynamic um, shape. Now, the, the battery is sitting here in the centerpiece and the stack is here in the rear. So it's actually, in terms of components, it's a fairly standard 3 inch. It's got, uh, this is a 1408, 3500 kV motors, 3 inch stem fan. I think these are like a 50 pitch, uh, pretty high pitch props. And, um, a nano cam in front, so uh, many people just ask me, how on earth are you going to um, start and land this? So I think for takeoff and landing, actually, I mean, if you look at the camera, I have a pretty, I have a pretty, like, fairly standard camera angle. It's like a 45 degree. That's the flattest I can get. So basically, it's just, the camera is at a normal angle. It's just sitting quite high up in the quads. So I think I should be able to fly this quite normally. Um, I have to, I'm actually gonna, just gonna put this rear part in a uh, empty toilet paper roll. <laughs> those are those are getting scarce here in Germany. Um, and that's how I'm, um, I'm planning on landing this and uh, I'm on doing the takeoff for landing. I'll probably just pop it into horizon mode and have it like hover like this uh, in front of me and then just make a drop and interestingly the quad is set up that way so pointing up just a fairly regular setup and just gonna tilt it uh, to make it fly so uh, I might just completely smash this I don't know it's windy outside it's just probably a silly idea anyways but <laughs> let's just see how it works out anyways even if I smash it this will be quite interesting to see so let's go outside and give this thing a try <sighs> So this is my high-tech <laughs> takeoff platform. I'm just gonna put this in here. Seems to work about right <laughs> and try to start this. All right, let's go. All right, so back inside, as you can see, I ended up crashing, but not too badly. It's only the plastic that is broken. All the components are fine. And, but the, the thing that really bothers me is that I do not have any DVR because my stupid DJI goggles didn't record it. I use DJI goggles with the analog adapter. And for some reason, um, I only have the last 20 seconds of every run. So no real DVR, unfortunately. But I'll just tell you how it handles. And to be honest, it handles quite normally when you, when you just fly like, maybe like a heavy, not that well-tuned three inch until you really uh, push the throttle and it sort of locks in. And it's like a point and shoot. It just pushes forward. It feels sort of locked and, and, and really gets quite fast. It got around 200 kilometers an hour, which uh, felt felt pretty fast. Although it's actually not that fast for a racing drone, uh, but it felt fast because it's sort of like you know not fully in control, uh, really kind of accelerating fast. So it was quite a lot of fun. Uh, what uh, what I realized is that. I mean, while the flight controller on Betterfly 4.1 stock pits actually handled uh, all of this very well, it gets into a lot of trouble when you decelerate after a speed run and um, try to kind of... Uh, so I ran out of space, had to do a kind of curve to, to get out of it, and um, the flight controller just lost control. I don't know, I, I crashed. So be careful to slowly go off the throttle after a speed run, and then you will be fine with this. Uh, overall, quite a lot of fun. I'll put all these files on Thingiverse in uh, case you want to try it too. And, and one more thing, I think, I mean, 200 kilometers an hour isn't that fast for a racing drone. I think it's just the um, the fact that I use 3500 kV motors, which isn't that high on 4S. I think they're just maxed out. That's also why I didn't have a particularly high amp draw. I like 
55 amps, which really is not that much. It's only like 12 amps per, uh, 12, 13 amps per motor. It's really not a lot. So I think it would be possible to run these 3500 kV motors on 6S on the setups. I dare to, <laughs> dare to say this could work and then reach uh, at least like 250, 300 kilometers an hour, maybe. Um, so, but I'm not sure if I'm gonna try this on 6S. It was quite a lot of fun to do this, to have these speed runs, but of course that's not, I mean, uh, I'd probably stick to my, uh, my my racing drones. That just makes more sense than doing speed runs all the time. And um, yeah, I put all these files on uh, Thingiverse, so you can play around with this yourself. And uh, yeah, I hope you found this interesting and useful. And of course, don't forget to like and subscribe.